Spencer Dinwiddie drained his second consecutive game winner, this time against his old team, while Luka topped off a week where he averaged 31-10-8 on 51-42-85 and shooting splits. Since acquiring Dinwiddie, the Mavs have the association's best record, along with the highest point differential and field goal percentage. A clutch performance down the stretch in Kings County gave the Big D their NBA most 15th comeback win of the year. It's safe to say GM Nico Harrison won the Porzingis trade, so let's look at how the Dallas Mavericks are shocking the NBA. Before continuing, please leave a thumbs up to support the development of my channel. Also, if you haven't already and love the NBA, you're going to love this channel. Subscribe and hit notifications for tons of dope content revolving around the 2022 playoffs that's on its way. CBS Sports gave Dallas some long overdue respect by putting the Mavericks as the number one team on their most recent power rankings, plus a two-time champion and legendary NBA scorer in Kevin Durant gave his thoughts on Luka's rapid ascension. What is it about his game that has allowed him to get to this level so quickly? Well, I mean, I think it's a culmination of playing as a, in the EuroLeague at such an early age, playing that, that style of basketball where you got the ball out top all game. It's a slower paced game and he controls it a lot. I mean, he's the main ball handler. You know, and they won, They run pretty much one play the whole game, which is a pick and roll for him, and then he just creates. And, um, you know, so it's unpredictable sometimes. He's such a great passer that he'll get into the lane and throw a dime. You know, after he, you know, goes up for a shot, he might throw a dime, you know. So he's unique in how they use him. Um, you know, they feature him every possession. So, um, and then they got other guys when he's not playing, like Spencer, who plays similar to him, and, and Jalen Brunson that plays similar to him. So they built they built that program for him the second he got there, and they made sure he was able to be the best version of himself every day. So, um, sky's the limit. He, he's going to continue to do this for the for the next decade or, or plus. Doncic's fellow Slovenian Goran Dragic also said post game against Brooklyn. He's a huge dude, man. He put you on his hip, and he's really tough to stop." End quote. Against the Nets on Thursday night, Luka stuffed the stat sheet with 37 points, 9 assists, 9 rebounds, 2 steals, and 1 block shot, making 14 of his 26 field goals, which included 5 triples. As not only Dallas' most talented player, but just as crucially their strongest vocal leader, Luka's body language under pressure, specifically when things aren't going his team's way, is extremely under control for such a young player. 34% of the Mavs' 43 wins this season have come in games where they've trailed by at least 15 points. While it's somewhat concerning they've built up a habit of getting down in games, conversely, Dallas's never-die mentality and how they're capable of rapidly overcoming large deficits and winning games in multiple ways, not just when they dominate, bodes well for Dallas in the 2022 playoffs. The Mavs' ability to collectively flip the switch is definitely a characteristic shared by about every NBA championship team in the association's 75-year history. The W against the Nets moved Dallas into fourth place in the Western Conference, giving them their highest win total in the Luka Doncic era, just like we talked about in this video, which you can go watch after this, we'll get to a breakdown of Dinwiddie's clutch performance. Before that, we can't gloss over the impact of the fairly unknown sophomore out of Arizona and from Australia in Josh Green. When Brooklyn looked unstoppable early on, the 21-year-olds getting down in a defensive stance and clamping up Goran Dragic stopped the Nets' momentum, allowing Dallas to get back into the game. Whether it's Green slashing, spot-up three-point shooting, or stone-cold mentality, this kid is extremely well-rounded. With the Mavs down seven on the road in Boston, with Boston fans including C's legend Paul Pierce going insane, watch how Josh catches and calmly knocks down a triple, even with Big Al flying over to contest him. Then Green's explosiveness and polished finishing beyond his years are shown off on this transition play after a nice gather and pass from Dodo right before he catches it. Watch how Josh jumps and flings his left foot back in midair providing momentum once he catches it, which makes it so he just needs one dribble to get from half court to the restricted area, and a finish at the rim despite Tatum being right there caps off the dominant take. The Aussie's shown off a ton of offensive upside, but he still leaps and bounds away from reaching his full potential on that end of the floor. With that said, the second year pro is already an outstanding defensive player. Josh doesn't have the minutes to qualify, but his 107.6 rating would rank him 0.1 ahead of Devin Booker as the most efficient defensive shooting guard in the association. 
Of course, role players like Green have had an impact all year long, but while Spencer Dinwiddie's only played 12 games in Maverick Threads since being dealt from the Washington Wizards, his value has been off the charts. Dallas now owns a record of 10-2 with Dinwiddie in the lineup, and most significantly, he provides this Mavericks team two players they can look to in the clutch to manufacture a shot from nothing. Most teams have one closer who can score on all three levels and stay poised under pressure, and I can't reiterate enough how much the Mavericks having two of them will come in handy once the playoffs hit and opposing teams' defensive pressure and game planning ramp up to a new difficulty. Post-game in Brooklyn, Spencer touched on what he and Luka have seen on the final possessions in the last few games, saying, In Boston, we talked about how he broke down the defense and Robert Williams had the natural reaction of a big to go to the paint and left me open again. With this one, I was in the high slot on the right side, Luka got the switch he wanted, he was going to operate, they sent the double, easiest pass out of the double because Luka was already kind of on the right side of the floor was to me, Dragic kind of shot through the passing lane so I couldn't do the one more pass to Dodo in the corner and time was up, so it was about taking the shot that we had. Over the last half decade, Dinwiddie's factually been one of the clutchest players in basketball, as over that span, Spencer ranks second behind Chi-Town's DeMar DeRozan in total game-winning shots with under 10 seconds remaining. To sum things up for the Mavs, the team's now third score in Jalen Brunson is going to be crucial for Dallas' playoff run. I'm sure with the NCAA championship he won at Villanova and several years of NBA playoff experience that he's gained, that should help Jalen be ready for those games where Dinwiddie and Doncic are both struggling and he's forced to come through with a massive performance. As for the rest of the bunch, the Mavs are currently missing Reggie Bullock, one of their best role players. However, Dorian Finney-Smith's two-way versatility at the four spot continues to stand out as DFS was a game-high plus 10 against the Nets. My fellow Torontonian Dwight Powell, along with Maxi Kleba, are also some underrated big men. A man acquired in the Dinwiddie trade, Davis Bertans, has helped keep the floor spaced, and Frank Nielakina plus Sterling Brown have provided stable depth at the guard positions. What's the most shocking part about the 2022 Mavericks? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says 4-1. Maybe 5-0 record for the Heat's next five games are very realistic. I think the only team with a legitimate chance of defeating them is the Warriors. Wiseman, Iguodala, and Steph might be playing, so that's a challenge for the Heat. The Nets and Sixers are also strong teams, but I think the Heat can win against them. Miami's a very strong team right now. Thanks for every amazing answer. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.